Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to take a look at layout, specifically a couple of things you can do with your floor plans to give them a little bit more depth. <laughs> Depth is kind of a weird word to use, but to give them a little bit more, yeah, you know, just something where it's a little bit beyond just lines and layout, something that adds that little special something that shows that you care about the floor plans that you're making. So let's take a look at those three things right now. All right, so I got a very, very simple model to work from here. Uh, if we orbit a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I don't need that. Sh I don't need her uh, peeking in and uh, casting a shadow onto my stuff. Oops! Spoiler: We're gonna look at shadows. So all I have here are some walls, and in the walls I got doors. Doors go all the way to the ground. The exterior doors have uh, you know little edges here just to maintain a floor. The windows you can see about a foot up or cut off. I did this. This, this is literally how my model is done. I could have done the same thing with sections. But I, again, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. There's no frills. This is not the model that we're going to mess with. We're just going to play with styles to see some different ways, styles and camera to see how we could, you know, next level this stuff. So I'm going to go back to a plan view. All right, so this is the thing I'm going to export. So I'm going to start simple. I'm just going to go file, save this view, file, send layout. Layout, I'm just going to say put a letter. That's it. So there, that's good. And that's like, Literally, that is good. We could actually take this right here and we could uh, start putting dimensions and door window call outs, whatever. We could actually start making this into uh, a dimension floor plan. That could, could absolutely be good. But we can also do some stuff with this simple model to go to another level. Now we've talked about things like putting, leaving materials visible, um, you know, doing color in here rather than all black and white. But uh, let's talk about how we can actually change how we're displaying our geometry to take these floor plants to the next level. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop back over into model, into uh, uh, my SketchUp model. Uh, first thing I'm going to look at is down here, shadows. I'm going to go ahead and flip my shadows on. And um, when I start playing with my shadows, a couple things I want to keep, keep an eye on. Uh, one is the darkness, right? So um, I don't want to go real dark like this. I want, I want to, I want a fairly light shadow. Um, the other thing is to consider where is it falling? Where do I want these shadows to hit my model? So yeah, I can come in, kind of, kind of clean those up so that they're, they're falling in the right direction. And then again, like I said, lighten this up. So I get the hint that that's falling on the ground, but not, I'm not hit over the head with it. It's also not going to interfere if I end up with text or something like that. I want it light enough so that I can see see through it. So something like that might be good. The other thing to consider is do I want it to fall on the ground or not? So when it falls on the ground, now it's falling outside of the building. I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, that actually looks kind of cool, but maybe I will just say keep it inside the building. Um, this depends. I mean, depending if you have your actual landscape modeled and it's different and that the shadows make a cool effect falling on it. Absolutely. I'm just going to say, let's do without. And uh, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say, update my scene, update everything. And then I'm going to go file, save, and then alt tab over to layout. And to update this model, I have to right click and I'm just going to say, update model reference. And there we go, there's my shadows. So the thing to remember about shadows in layout is they're controlled a little bit differently in that I can just kind of come here and flip them on and off. I do have a couple of controls where I can change the date and time, but things like, does it fall on the, the ground or not? Uh, how severe is it where I played with that slider to change the darkness, that's all controlled in the model. So you do have to change it and set that up over there. And then when it comes in here, you do have the ability to toggle it on and off. Okay, that's kind of cool, but what else I got? Well, I'm glad I asked. So another thing that I like the look of, and we work with a couple of architects, or I have worked with a couple of architects who do this sort of thing, is come into camera and switch from parallel projection to perspective. And in perspective, so that's, you can already see, that's that gives kind of a cool look. Um, I can change this. I can come into view, no, I'm sorry. I was right in the right spot, camera field of view, 
and then click and drag up and down to kind of change how how deep I'm peering into this model. You can see if I pull way down like that, I get it zooms further away, which is fine because I can zoom back in. But you can see how how exaggerated that is. Whereas if I if I go the other way, pull way down like this, I get more of a a hint of depth. You know, so I, I am acknowledging that, yeah, I do have some depth to these walls, but uh, it's not a ton. And you kind of see how that how that plays with the shadows. So I can actually see what I'm casting shadows of here. I see that the window is just that portion. So I could do something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and update again. Update everything. And then if I alt tab over here, right click. Update model reference. And there we go. I got that little bit of depth added in there. Um, this is nice. This In black and white, this is less effective than if I have some flooring or something like that. But uh, you can kind of see how it does add a little bit to it. Um, it is a cool look. It really does look neat. I like how that 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 uh, the shadow works with the depth of the walls. Um, you have to be intentional when you do things like measure or add, I'm sorry, add dimensions because I want to make sure I am pulling off of, because I can look, look at this, I can, I can come in right now and I can actually inference those inside corners. So I want to make sure when I do dimensions, I'm pulling off of the correct exterior top edges so I get my right dimensions. Just something to be conscious of if you work with a non-parallel projection. So that's a cool look. Um, let's do one more. Hop back over here. So I'm going to go back to my original view. Um, I'm going to go back to parallel projection. I'm going to go back to shadows turned off. And I'm going to update this scene again. All right, so one more look I want to do. And it is, some of you guys have probably already guessed this. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. And I know I already hear it. You guys put ambient occlusion on everything. It's in every other video. It is, and it's new for us. We're excited about it. But I like how ambient occlusion adds that just little extra depth to a 3D model, even a 3D model that I'm looking at in a 2D view. So if I turn on ambient occlusion right now, um, I do have to be intentional. Ambient occlusion is meant to be subtle. So in the scope of the size of a house, ambient occlusion in a normal setting, which is maybe something like 50-50, 50% and 50% like this, I don't get a whole lot. So I do have to come in here and bring the distance up and bring the intensity up. Once I do that, you can see I kind of get these little these little shadows in the corner. Again, it's not hard like those those the shadows I had uh, from the the light. It is just little bit little subtleness at the corners, just to give me a little bit of depth. Personally, I think this is even cooler than the shadows falling in. I like the shadows falling in. Um, the fact that the shadows reference you know the cut walls i don't really love the way that looks this on the other hand definitely gives depth i mean if i look at the two of these turn that off turn it back on i like that way way more so i'm going to go ahead and update my scene again and it's going to i do want to create a new style from that too because i need a new style this this style is now called style two and we'll see why that's important in one second so I'm going to go ahead back up to whoop, back up to file. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hop back over into layout. And like I did before, I'm just going to click, right click, update model reference. Turn my shadow off. And there I go. Now I just have that ambient occlusion goodness. Now a couple things to note about this. Styles can't be edited as of the recording of this video through layout. So I can switch between my styles. Here's the standard style that I started with. And here's my style two where I have the ambient occlusion on. I can swap between the two, but I can't fine tune. I can't turn the ambient occlusion. I can't adjust it. It just shows up in here. So I can turn it on or off through the style, but I can't actually adjust it or you know just flip the ambient occlusion on or off. I have to change the whole style to do that. The other thing to note is that if I come from raster and I flip from raster to vector, it goes away. Ambient occlusion is a raster rendered effect. So it will only show up if you have raster turned on. Of course, this works for hybrid because hybrid is raster 
with vector lines laid over, which is probably the cleanest, best look that I can get. This, I can mess with my edges and that sort of stuff, you know that. But this look is great, and this is achieved by making hybrid. So just something to consider. So there you go, three different things you could do to your floor plans, and uh, maybe just to give them that little extra pop that you're looking for to set your plans apart from others. So there you go, just a couple of options that can help you take your layouts, your floor plans, and maybe just bump them up a little bit so you know they're better than everybody else's. Simple options, styles and camera settings that can add that little bit of extra depth to your floor plans. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Is there something else you do in your floor plans in the layout that make them look better than anybody else? Let us know, we might make a video about it. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.